because dude this can be applied to anything like if you have like in-game anxiety out of game anxiety like this is literally how to get rid of anxiety bro this is what this is what i wanted to talk about dude i had a horrible slump from like july to september i was in a horrible state of mind and so my slump was not due to like anything specific in game it was actually completely mental it was anxiety bro it was literally anxiety and full-blown dpdr which is pretty much anxiety plus it's like i'll get into it i'll get into it so this dude this is what i talk about man i had that horrible slump from july to september i was in a horrible state of mind dude i was it was just like every day <sighs> I don't know if anyone knows what de depersonalization is or derealization. I struggled with that for the past like two, three years. I smoked weed with uh, some friends like three years ago, had a panic attack. I don't know, you ever you ever been like dare class in high school and they're like, yeah, some guy smoked weed, it was never the same, like went crazy afterwards. Bro, I, I never thought that would happen to me. That shit happened to me, bro. Like actually, I smoked weed with my friends like three years ago. I had a panic attack and I never felt the same since. And it's not because I went crazy, which I was 100% convinced I was, it was because of what I understand now as DPDR, which is depersonalization, derealization. And it's something that I think the statistic is like 60% of people will experience at least once in their lifetime. Talking about that slump, bro, I had that for the past three months. My, my depersonalization got just even worse. My anxiety got so bad that I was having like so many panic attacks daily, bro. Like I would wake up in a state of panic. I would wake up in a state of adrenaline and anxiety. I was in this full blown, just existential crisis where i was overthinking everything obsessed obsessed with the afterlife and all this crazy stuff bro i was in a horrible state of mind as i looked into it i looked into how to get rid of this shit, bro all of it was linked they're all symptoms of dpdr i wasn't actually going crazy i, I created a slideshow bro because there's a lot to learn with anxiety and dpdr recovery but it's relative it's, it's simple in practice but it's like it's yeah it's simple in practice but it's kind of complicated when you're first learning about it but uh, I wanted to make a slideshow about this because, dude, this can be applied to anything. Like, if you have, like, in-game anxiety, out-of-game anxiety, like, this is literally how to get rid of anxiety, bro. There's so many people that, like, talk about, like, how to, like, manage your anxiety. Like, bro, this is not how to manage it. This is how to get rid of it. Like, you don't need to live with anxiety. Shout out Jordan Hargrave, bro. I took his course. Bro, that shit saved my life. I swear to God, it saved my life, dude. I was in the worst state of mind ever. So, shout out Jordan Hargrave, man. Why is this important? Okay, let me move the webcam because it's blocking something real quick. So fuck what am i doing this is important because bro anxiety sucks dpdr sucks who the fuck wants to deal with that you'll have an increase in performance you sleep better play better you get to socialize like everything feels good you'll have optimism you'll have hope again you won't have obsessive thoughts which is what i've been struggling with like i said right here bro you can do inherently scary things easily like things that seem scary to you before you can make them not scary you don't need like willpower or anything to overcome these scary things you could just make them not scary and they're just easy which i put riz gains bro you can get bitches so uh you can train yourself to not be scared of anything like i said right here which is i would refer to as gratuitous anxiety because as we can get into like what, what is anxiety we'll get into what gratuitous anxiety in a second what is anxiety anxiety is pretty much just fight or flight dude like when you ever hear the whole fight or flight response of like what animals do in the wild that's all anxiety is it's your body telling you either to fight from something or fly from something there's nothing more complicated than that and the other thing too is that all anxieties are the same thing so if you have like i don't know social anxiety end game anxiety uh perfectionistic anxiety workaholistic anxiety it's all the same shit it's your body registering a a danger a threat that is telling you to fight or fly from it's all the same so they all should be treated the same and to understand anxiety and like how it works, you have to understand your nervous system. So there's two parts to your nervous system, your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. OK, think of the sympathetic nervous system as the gas and the parasympathetic nervous system as the brakes of what am I fucking doing? The brakes of your nervous system. So like your sympathetic nervous system is all about like gearing you up, like movement. Like as you can see here, sympathetic is like dilates pupils, so you know, tunnel vision, accelerates heart rates, dilates bronchi. So you're breathing gets faster your parasympathetic is the opposite it like widens your field of vision your heart rate slows down and so you need to understand these two parts right and so back to anxiety with after we talk about those two parts of the nervous system your sympathetic and parasympathetic sympathetic all anxiety is is a sympathetic nervous system overload so it's your sympathetic nervous system like filling up with a bunch of energy and it's being activated more than your parasympathetic nervous system think of that car it's like just pushing on the gas and it's like picking up more than you're breaking so you're picking up speed and your your speed's elevating and so we can talk about this cup analogy that i have here 
a lot of people when they think about trauma we're right into trauma now they think that trauma can only happen from like a single instance like if you got in a car accident or if you witness someone dying uh that's not true that is a way to get traumatized which is like single point trauma but there's actually another way to get traumatized which is known as complex trauma which is like a consecutive buildup of stressors you know activation of a pair or activation of the sympathetic nervous system to a point of overload that you know causes trauma a trauma state think of like the cup right here if you like and this is your sympathetic nervous system once it fills up fully you're traumatized right it's like it's too much too much energy so like someone gets in a car accident it's like someone dumping water in this cup just full on dump it it overloads within like a minute it starts flooding off the sides what complex trauma would be is if someone added like couple uh, like you know teaspoon of water teaspoon of water teaspoon of water teaspoon of water and no one ever emptied this cup out until like 15 years later when this cup fully overflows and boom you reach a point of you know overload sympathetic nervous system overload which puts you into a trauma state or the freeze response of fight flight freeze which is known as dpdr which is what i struggled with yeah there's three levels of nervous system we're gonna use the, the lion example say you are walking or you're just walking like you're a caveman right Let's go back to caveman times you're just walking down a trail Nothing's going on. You're with your caveman wife. Shit's good. You just had like a drumstick and she she brought you some berries or something. You're just walking. It's chill. It's chill. You're in a state of, it's known as the social engagement system. This is like where you're calm. This is relaxation. This is peace. And there might be a little bit of sympathetic nervous system activation, which is your gas pedal, right? You might be picking up a little bit of energy, but it's not to a point of fight or flight. And uh, within the state, you can get like focus, which is like, like I said, a little bit of sympathetic nervous system activation, a little bit of adrenaline, which is like something you would see if you're playing, I don't know, CS or if you're aim training, there is a little bit of activation in the sympathetic nervous system to get you focused, but it's not to a point of overload. Uh, let's say that you're, you know, the caveman, the caveman wife, you're walking on that same trail and you see a lion, I don't know, 15 feet away. Your body starts gearing up. It's like, oh, fuck, like something's about to happen. You start feeling anxiety. This is your fight or flight response, right? We can also use this example as a, uh, the lion coming and attacking your caveman wife then you're going to enter probably the fight response so you're going to defend your wife you know so you're going to try and fight the lion uh, after this point though it gets worse so like let's say the lion were to, was to attack you it had you in it like the, the jaws of its mouth and it's like dragging you away you're going to enter what's known as a freeze response which is depersonalization derealization which is where you play dead essentially your your body is registering it's like okay there's too much shit going on we're probably going to die so last ditch effort let's disassociate from our body and all feelings entirely and we're going to play dead and there's advent uh, there's advantages to this evolutionarily speaking right if you play dead there's a good chance the lion is not going to be entertained by you as a prey and it's going to leave you alone and you have a chance to survive and also if you play dead and you dissociate if the lion were to eat you you would not experience pain and this is essentially what i experienced bro so using the cup analogy of the complex trauma, single point trauma, I uh, I never realized a lot of my problems mentally were from trauma because I was like, nothing bad ever happened to me. I had like a great childhood, but it was, it was all trauma problems, which is complex trauma. It was a buildup of stressors, which I, I don't know if I've ever talked about it on stream or on my channel before, but I've struggled with OCD and anxiety my whole life. And talking about the time I smoked weed and, and uh, had a panic attack, all that essentially was, if we go back to the cup analogy was my whole life with the OCD and anxiety. It was just this, this cup just kept building up, bro. Every day, every day until about 18 years old, this cup filled up to about like right here. It filled up to about 98% full of just stress and anxiety and energy and emotion. And I smoked weed and had a panic attack and it flooded the cup. And I end up, you know, entering into a trauma, the, the freeze response, which is depersonalization. I end up depersonaliz depersonalizing from my body and nothing felt real. I didn't feel real. Reality didn't feel real. I felt like I was like watching life through a TV. And uh, it was some scary shit, bro. Depersonalization is some scary shit. And I wanted to talk about this on the channel because I've looked so much for videos, dude. Uh, I looked so much for videos on how to solve this. And a lot of the stuff I found was all bullshit, apparently, after I found, you know, this dude, Jordan Hargrave. He has a, a whole different approach, which is like the meta approach for trauma, which is I'll get into. But yeah, shout out to dude. A lot of the stuff I'm saying is what I got from him from the course that I took from him. So all credit to Jordan Hargrave, man. If you are experiencing anything with anxiety, trauma, DPDR, go check out his channel. Back to what I was saying, the DPDR. Out the, the the weed that I smoked that fuck you, fucking mosquito, bro. Fuck out of here. See, that just entered fight or flight. All right, back to what I was saying. Yeah, when I smoked weed, bro, that was pretty much just the straw that broke the sympathetic nervous system camel's back. Like I just I reached an overload point. I ended up 
entering the freeze response. When you start experiencing this stuff, anxiety, or if you're at full blown DPDR, you might find yourself coping with these symptoms. A lot of people think this is a solution to these problems. It really isn't. Yeah, you might you might find yourself with addictions. I know I struggle with a nicotine addiction, porn addiction, uh, food addiction, uh, workaholism. Uh, yeah, those are like the main four for me. Addicted to productivity and stuff. That was like the most recent one. Uh, you'll find yourself trying to distract, you know, distract yourself, work grinding, trying to grind school. You might be on a knowledge grind or, you know, you just distract yourself in general with TikTok and YouTube and all that stuff, TV shows, movies. You might find yourself with obsessions, which is what I recently really struggled with was uh, obsessive thoughts. I've always struggled with obsessive thoughts my whole life with the OCD, but uh, you know, the past couple of months when it got really bad, uh, I was struggling with existential obsessions, which is the next thing on the point, which it makes completely perfect sense. I thought, dude, my, my obsessions of like the afterlife, God, if God's real, religion, if it's false, if it's true, what what is consciousness? What is reality? Can you trust reality? What what are the things you can trust? Bro, I was obsessed with philosophy for like four months. And it makes perfect sense why you end up obsessed with anything when you're in a trauma state or an anxiety state. It's because essentially all those obsessions are doing is getting you away from the feelings you're experiencing in your body. So like, it makes perfect sense. If you are struggling with any of these symptoms, bro, you're not going crazy. I thought I broke my brain by questioning the reality of God or consciousness that like, I was like, fuck dude, like I've gone somewhere no human has, should have gone before, but no, I was just experiencing DPDR, wasn't thinking straight. You're, you know, your cognitive function of your brain shuts down when you, uh, when you reach a high level of emotion. And also it's just my, essentially me just trying to cope with how my body was feeling physically, which was just like high energy, you know, your sympathetic nervous system overload. So some other symptoms you might need, uh, my experience is needed for reassurance, like validation. It would be for like myself where it's like, okay, I played bad this game. Like, let me go practice like for two hours and aim train so that I, I can never lose that fight again. Like I need to reassure that I can't lose that fight. You'll find like weird things in like, ways to reassure yourself if you're experiencing anxiety and DPDR. Oversleeping, uh, you know, that's another symptom you might see. Workaholism, I put, and then productiveness, addictions. There's a lot of other things. These are mostly what I struggled with, uh, but yeah, there's more stuff out there. Yeah, as we can see, beat your meat. DPDR, depersonalization, derealization. I kind of already covered this. It's the freeze response, scary as fuck. It is beatable though. That is what I realized from that course. You didn't break your brain. You're not going insane. This is conquerable. I've had moments since trying to grind out of anxiety and all that stuff. I've had days of peace, which I haven't had my whole life. There is hope, bro. I, and it's like, if even if you don't think there is hope, there is biological, neurological, psychological, just like, it's a fact that there is, like you can recover from this. It is a fact. So rest in that. It is a fact that you can get out of this. You can get out of your social anxiety, in-game anxiety, whatever anxiety. It is a fact. Uh, but DPDR specifically, feeling out of body, nothing feels real, existential obsessions, no connections to feeling. You feel nothing essentially because if you think about it, DPDR is a freeze response. Your your body is registering your body to get eaten by a lion. So let's disconnect feeling. You don't want to feel pain. You can't just disconnect from one feeling. You have to disconnect from all of them. So if you don't want to feel pain. You can't feel happiness. You can't feel joy. You can't feel sadness. You just don't feel anything. Nothing feels real. That's what DPDR is essentially. Trouble sleeping, trouble feeling empathy. That's something I struggled with really bad. I thought I was like, I thought I was like a narcissist. Uh, sometimes I still question if I am because of like, I knowing, I think now I think it's because of this, the DPDR is that like, I just had no connection to my emotions. So I just lacked emotional empathy to other people. Uh, nihilism, nihilism, how you pronounce it. Uh, that's what I went through for the past three months. I was a full blown, bro. I'm not joking, dude. I was like a full blown, uh, epistemic skeptic. I didn't think you can trust anything. I didn't think you can trust reality. I thought there was no meaning to life. Nothing mattered. Uh, very scary shit, dude. Uh, let me tell you, man, have being in that mind state is fucking terrifying. And it was on my mind every day, morning to night, existential thoughts, purpose of life, all that stuff very scary shit man uh if you are nihilistic there is hope for you and i wonder it's just a theory i got you know uh, if a lot of people who struggle with nihil nihilism are uh, actually just in a trauma response uh more symptoms feel like a robot distortions in time days can feel extremely long or extremely short and also lapses in memory i noticed that like i'd have conversation with old friends they're talking about old shit that had with us some stories and stuff and i can't recall it and then as i started recovering and having days of actual peace 
these memories came flooding back to me the empathy came flooding back to me the the nihilism disappeared i was able to sleep bro i felt things i felt emotions like it's crazy this shit is recovered bro have hope we'll get into more it, it gets deeper so now let's understand how your body understands this stuff because you can understand shit mentally cognitively logically but your body doesn't speak that your body doesn't speak logic so you can understand shit logically but it's all about communicating that to your body because everything i just talked about is not logic the fight flight freeze response is energy it's is a sympathetic nervous system buildup that's in your body so if you want to calm down the body you have to go to the body and communicate to the body in the, the language the body speaks which is physical so your body cannot tell the difference between physical threats and emotional ones you being scared in that 1v4 to your body is the same as a lion being in a bush 15 feet away and it's about to eat you like when you experience that anxiety it's the same shit bro fear is fear to the body what you have to tell yourself there is no lion dude there is no lion there trying to eat you so you can get caught in thought loops you can find yourself getting caught in thought loops if you know you're sitting here trying to fight anxiety mentally it's like it's okay it's okay it's okay don't be scared don't be scared don't be scared i, I noticed myself i would do that i would constantly need to reassure myself in like every with everything but i was experiencing anxiety everywhere so i was just constantly in my own head it's fucking exhausting most of the time when you're seeking like logic logical answers are like you're like man i'm like always anxious in game like I, how do i fix that like and you look for an answer like oh don't be anxious like it's okay people mess up like it's okay to fail like i think everyone kind of already gets that some people maybe they need to learn logically like oh it's okay to fail or fill in the blank of whatever anxiety is but most of the time that's just reassurance and it doesn't actually solve the issue of the body being overloaded i put this in here you have to become comfortable like you kind of have to stray away from logic when it comes to anxiety you have to learn how to relax and be okay with the maybes of life and the maybe nots because you can't always have reassurance right like let's say i get anxious because i want to go pro in cs and then i'm sitting here trying to reassure myself like oh you'll go pro if you aim train if you demo review if you team practice like you have to do these things you'll go pro then and so i'm, I'm sitting here trying to like reassure myself reassure myself and validate myself and like i'll fall through and try and do these things but in reality that's not that's not that's not the truth that's not the reality the reality is I don't know, maybe I'll go pro if I do these things. And that terrified me. The maybes and the maybe nots of life. That's the key when it comes to conquering anxiety is becoming okay with the maybes and the maybe nots. And you have to understand that possibility is not probability. And that was something that terrified me when I was uh, obsessed with my existential thoughts. It's like, man, what, what if nothing is real? What if I'm just a butterfly dreaming that I'm a human? The one thing that calmed me down was that the saying right there is that possibility is not probability. So just because something is possible doesn't mean it's probable. This can help ease your anxiety and also help you with becoming okay with probabilities and not 100% and like complete confidence in things. Like you can't, that's, you'll never have Descartes confidence in anything, Descartes uh, certainty of anything. Like you'll never be, honestly, bro, you'll never, you can never prove it wrong that you're not a butterfly dreaming you're human, but you can also never prove it wrong that you're not a caterpillar dreaming that you're human or an ant dreaming that you're human or a spider dreaming that you're human. There's an infinite of possibilities of what you are dreaming that you're human. But just because there's a possibility of something doesn't mean it's probable. It's all about going with what is probable and having confidence, aka faith, in stuff. So there is no line. Become okay with the maybes and the maybe nots of life. For me personally, it would be uh, maybe I'll go pro, maybe I won't go pro. Become okay with that. Now, how do we get to communicate to this to the body after we understand dealing with the logic side we can't really rely on logic when it comes to anxiety kind of have to push that to the side now how do we get to the body and tell the body that's okay you have to do it physically if you were to close your fist like this is a closed fist analogy if you're to close your fist tightly and you were to tell yourself open fist does the fist open no it doesn't open you have to open it you have to physically activate fist open if you do it right now you'll see what i'm talking about you have to open your fist so the same thing happens to your body when you go calm down that doesn't mean shit your body doesn't understand what the fuck that means what does calm down mean we'll get to that soon calming down essentially activating the parasympathetic nervous system we'll get into how to do that so it's all about first if you want to activate the parasympathetic nervous system it's going to help if you reduce the sympathetic nervous system so back to the gas the car analogy of the gas and the uh, brake pedal let's stop putting pushing on the gas and we'll start pushing on the brakes you don't want to be pushing on the gas while you push on the brakes so let's reduce sympathetic nervous system load you can spend less time engaging in stressful activities um this is something you can do i recommend just making them not stressful if possible and just be learning how to be calm within them spend less time in engaging in stressful relationships right you might have to cut people off 
Again, option two, make that relationship not stressful. That's always an option. Uh, proper sleep, proper nutrition, proper exercise, proper recovery. Um, yeah, if you're really into bodybuilding, bro, you know, lifting weights, you might have to take a deload a week, which you should every eight to 12 weeks, you should take a deload week because you end up taxing your nervous system, which is the same thing that is responsible for your anxiety and your fight, flight, freeze. Moving on, caffeine, reducing caffeine intake because that uh, also activates your sympathetic nervous system. Um, and we'll get into how to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, how to self-regulate. Hit the brakes, motherfucker. So this is kind of small because there's a bunch of things you can do. You have to understand a couple things first. You have to understand the idea of interioception. This is basically what's known as the felt sense. And this is like recognizing tension, recognizing energy and emotional buildup within the body. This is your perception of these things. And then you get to self-regulation, which is actually addressing those issues, right? So what are your tools that you can use? Starting off, we got some muscle relaxation, uh, relaxation type stuff, uh, progressive muscle relaxation, where you like contract your muscles and relax, they over relax. You got hot bath, Epsom salts, pelvic floor technique, limp noodle. I'm gonna get into the specifics of all these later. You got breathing techniques, feeling your emotions, how to actually process your emotions. And also you have releasing your, uh, energy which is another thing. Uh, there's other tactics like widening your field of vision to reduce a sympathetic nervous system overload, uh, going on a walk, any type of straight move, forward moving activity reduces anxiety. It like pretty much essentially tells your brain like, oh, we're, we're walking away from a threat. Let's calm down now. Like jump roping and stuff, any type of cardio standing in place doesn't do that. Uh, sunlight in the morning and also sauna or cold exposure can also help with anxiety and resilience to anxiety. You got to understand that you have a bunch of motherfucking tools, bro. You got a bunch of tools, but you need to do specific tools for each problem. So we'll break it down to three issues. This is, again, this all comes from Jordan Hargrave, bro. You saved my life, dude. You got three things to look for. Are you experiencing little tension? Are you experiencing big tension? Or are you experiencing adrenaline? And there's differences and you need different tools for each. Starting off with little tension. This is just like the going back all the way here. Back to the cup analogy. Little tension is if like you're down here, right? You got a little bit of like energy and tension building up. It's like the, we're going to the lion analogy. It's like you're walking down the trail and you see a lion like a couple miles out. It's like, okay, it's not an immediate threat, but that's kind of scary. It's a little bit of buildup of tension, energy, and emotion. Um, also, quickly throw this in here. You can be experiencing sympathetic nervous system load without actually feeling fear. Once it passes a certain threshold is when you're experiencing when you start experiencing fear it's important to empty this cup every now and then before you even experience fear to begin with don't be trying to react to the cup filling up once you start feeling scared just constantly empty this cup going back to what tool for when little tension you know a little bit of energy and build up in the cup this is fundamental is to constantly empty this cup is fundamental to recovering from anxiety and conquering your gratuitous anxiety like I also learned from Jordan Hargrave is that too many people resort to like 30 minute meditation sessions at the end of the night. But if we're doing going back to the car analogy, that's like you driving that car and just holding the gas pedal down all day long. And then nighttime comes around and you slam on the brakes and you bring the car all the way to a stop to try and go to bed. That's way too chaotic. It takes way too long. Ideally, you want to drive the car, you know, get to 30 miles per hour. Oh, you hit 40. Let's hit the brakes a little bit. Let's slow down. Get back to 30. You know, we're winding down for bed. Let's start slowing down. All right, we're 20. Okay, it's about 20 minutes before bed. All right, let's hit 10. And then finally you hit the brakes and you go down to zero, right? You want to control the car. If you're a race car driver, you're not holding gas the whole time. You master both pedals. Same thing with your anxiety or sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. You don't want to be in one, uh, in a sympathetic nervous system dominant state for too long. You want to hit the gas, hit the brakes throughout the day. So this is mastering the little tension. Ideally, you want to be in a state of parasympathetic nervous system dominance which is like peace and calmness how to do that so the little tension techniques spam these motherfuckers bro spam them throughout the day like three four hundred times like every five to ten minutes just check in with yourself and relax so the most op one is the pelvic floor relaxation i call it sag your sack where it's like you kind of just think of like just dropping your ball sack oh um, <laughs> there's like there's like muscles in your pelvis uh your hip floor muscles that are actually the first muscles to tense up when you experience fight or flight. It, they essentially connect your lower body to your upper body. It prepares you to fight or flight. Like you're connected, you're nice and tense, you're able to run faster. Like So if these are the first ones to tense up, if you can relax them, it basically signals to your body, it's like, oh wow, there actually is nothing to worry about. There's an overall calming effect 
of relaxing your hip floor muscles that it relaxes all your muscles so if you can master the hip floor you can relax everything this is the most op one to spam in order to like do this and understand how to relax those muscles you want to do pmr progressive muscle relaxation you want to learn what it feels like to be tense and what it feels like to be relaxed so you can do that by like flexing those pelvic floor muscles like really hard and you'll feel them tense up you hold it for like five seconds and just feel what that feels like and then you let it go and then you feel what it feels like when it's relaxed and when you contract a muscle when you constrict a muscle really hard for five seconds and you let it go it overly relaxes so it shows you what the muscle actually feels like when it's relaxed and you do this over and over eventually you build up that mind muscle connection with that that muscle and you're able to just relax it instantly you're able just to instantly relax it you don't know you no longer have to contract contract and then relax the contracting and then relaxing of that muscle is just to teach you what each part feels like eventually you want to just get good at just being a state of like i don't know five out of ten contraction to a zero out of ten contraction and just relax from any state if that makes sense um that's the most op one bro i was doing this when i was at lan in dallas like if i was getting nervous i was just spamming the fuck out of this no one can see that you're doing it like you're just dropping your sack to the the chair like no one's gonna look at your sack while you're playing i don't even know if it literally drops your sack but that's like the mental cue i use it's just sag your sack and it sounds cool uh so yeah just sag your sack more the other technique you can do is like the limp noodle which is where you just like literally just act like a noodle and you just like full-on just limp and you let everything just limp out oh uh, that one's good too but it's kind of weird if you do that in public like you're just fucking flopping on the floor like so that one's like okay uh another one's trust your skeleton which is like similar to limp noodle like if you feel your like your your skeleton is made to hold up your weight your all your body weight so just thinking of the cue like trust your skeleton you can just like let everything just hang like it, you're not gonna fall over just let everything hang on your skeleton and it basically like helps your brain just learn to like let go of any of that energy and tension build up and just relax the muscles um and then this one this one should ideally be 24 7. you want to belly breathe 24 7. uh when you belly breathe it also helps relax those pelvic floor muscles and also you get way more oxygen into your body all mammals are meant to be belly breathing humans are the only ones that don't because they're worried about like i don't know looking fat so a lot of people like flex their core to try and like avoid looking fat who gives a fuck bro if it's making you feel anxious who gives a fuck if you look fat it's natural you're supposed to belly breathe plus you're probably gonna get better gains better sleep gains it's just better for you everywhere ideally you want to belly breathe 24 7. if you notice yourself get, like start chest breathing force yourself to belly breathe and it'll tell your body to relax next up you have big tension so like this is where like you start really feeling anxious i put this right here because i realized this as i've been trying to recover is that you need to use the correct tool for the correct problem so if you're experiencing big tension the pelvic floor and the belly breathing will help but it's not strong enough dude like you you're gonna be there for like hours trying to calm down from a big tension state if we're going back to the cup analogy struggling with big tension is like being like right here like it's pretty full um it's pretty easy to empty this cup with little tension techniques because it's already like close to empty but once you're up here like you need something that's going to empty a little bit faster so there's tools that you need to use when you're experiencing big tension so a hot bath works amazingly epsom salts or relaxation music on top of it catholic chants bro i'm not even catholic that shit's op dude it sounds like halo music that sh it's crazy pmr i was just talking about progressive muscle relaxation this is a fundamental you need to learn how to re relax every muscle uh think about it like aim training it's a motor skill to be able to relax a muscle it's just like learning how to flick right that's a motor skill learning how to relax is also another motor skill that you can grind and like be snappy with like you can be crispy with relaxation dude like so you can grind this and you can just like relax in the spot with like some intense stuff like if you're trying to raise at the gym and you're starting to get scared if you grinded this at home you can you can release it out bro you can pull you can pull it out and you just calm down and go talk to that girl fast pmr this is op it's op as fuck for big tension this is what i i've recently started doing i'm about to demonstrate this uh it's essentially where you contract a bunch of muscles and then you relax a bunch of muscles at once and it helps you really calm down so what fast pmr looks like you want to take a deep breath in like you want to go like and then you want to combine this with a physiological size so you want to take a deep breath in as much as you can and then take another one on top of it so it's like and you want to push it down to your belly and you, you don't breathe out yet you hold it and then while you hold it you want to contract like ideally you want to sit down and you want to contract like fucking like every like your chest your arms your core, 
your legs you want to contract it all and your face and then you let go and you breathe out slowly when you let go it relaxes all those muscles it over relaxes all those muscles so you feel you release a bunch of tension and then plus with the breath right when you do that double inhale that's known as the physiological sigh uh that's another quick way to relax instantly and uh like turn off literally turn off the part of the brain that's responsible for anxiety build up you, ba you basically combine the physiological side with pmr and you get fast pmr and that's like the technique you do you I, ideally want to do one set of it where you're contracting like your chest arms core and then like your quads or no in your hamstrings and you do another set of it where you end up shrugging and then like back arms core and then quad the second one would look like this so like the first one is like this and you're bent over you're bent over and you're contracting like this and then the second one you lift up like this you lift your legs up like this and then you get your back and your your, your traps and you're like that if that makes sense all right you want to do like two sets of that you want to get your traps involved because you store a lot of stress in your traps right fast pnr op physiological side op um you got breath techniques which the physiological side would be part of you got you can do a four seven eight tempo so you breathe in for four seconds ideally into your belly and then you hold for seven you release for eight slowly and you want to have perforated lips right you want your lips to be like this when you breathe out you don't want to try and like breathe out slowly like this it's too much work um you also do tri-stage breathing or known as a uh, triphasmic triphasmic breathing i got this from Do uh, dr k healthy gamer where essentially you breathe into your belly and then you breathe into your chest and you breathe in a bit more and you raise your shoulders like and then you blow it all out that's a good breath technique too uh naps op the one to 20 minute power nap releases a crazy amount of tension elevating your feet slightly also helps too when you're trying to take a nap the goal isn't to sleep the goal is relaxation and then eventually you end up falling asleep but if if you have the goal in mind of when you're taking a nap even when you're trying to go to bed it's like my goal isn't to fall asleep my goal is to relax you'll end up falling asleep faster because you you get out of your brain of like oh i need to fall asleep i need to fall asleep uh, NSDR protocols also helps really well too with this, which is non-sleep deep rest. This also really helps too with learning. Meditations, this is another thing that's good too for releasing it, big tension. Uh, don't confuse this though with rumination. If you struggle with obsessive thoughts, I thought for like two years that I was meditating because I would sit with myself and sit with my thoughts. All I was doing was known as rumination, which is like a symptom of OCD, where it's like I'm obsessing over thoughts. And it's like, okay, I'll be okay if I do this. I'll be okay if I do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. I need. And I was just obsessed with my thoughts. Known as rumination. You're pro you're trying to like problem solve everything. Don't do that, bro. That's not meditation. You're making the problem worse. And essentially, that's just like spamming reassurance. It makes your anxiety worse. Don't do that. Prayer is also really good too. I don't know if anyone else is Christian or religious. Whatever your religion is, I respect it. Fundamentally, I disagree with you. Jesus is king. But prayer can be. You know very helpful for a big tension again though if you are religious you gotta be careful man because if you struggle with religious ocd you might end, end up with you know obsessive thoughts of like constantly praying it's like god like please help me please help me please help me god like forgive me for my sins and like you end up with like weird obsessions religious obsessions which aren't helpful adrenaline you have the two stages little tension big tension right and you have the last one, which is adrenaline, full-blown full adrenaline. Uh, this is important to know because if you're experiencing adrenaline, nothing that I just told you is going to work. You have to do something to get rid of the adrenaline first. If you do not release this adrenaline and find a way to metabolize it, it can take up from seven to 32 hours for this adrenaline to uh, metabolize within your bloodstream. So that means that you're going to feel anxious for seven to 32 hours. Get rid of that shit. We'll talk about how. How to know if you're experiencing adrenaline? Uh, I got this from Jordan Hargrave again. He said it like it feels like almost like there's like electricity in your heart. That's what usually what I go off of. Like, if I feel like just like this, like electricity just going through my like my chest and how to get rid of it, you need to do something that adrenaline would be used for, which is like fighting or flying from a line, fleeing from a line. Working out is not fast enough to release adrenaline, right? You're pushing weights, you know, if you're bodybuilding, you're probably doing some type of like slow tempo slow eccentrics pauses and stuff not fast enough bro if you're fighting a lion you're not gonna fucking three second way down pause and then push it off you like you you're trying to fucking fight the lion like you're fast twitch bro fast twitch like fucking get get the motherfucker you know you're like you're going crazy so to get rid of the adrenaline 
you want to do something that the, the adrenaline will be used for. So either you sprint crazy fast for 20 seconds or you like punch something. If you have a punching bag or a couch, you punch it for like 20 seconds really fast. There's other things you can do too if you're like injured. Uh, it's like a drum roll technique. I just learned this from Jordan Hargrave. You want to breathe in like twice. You, go, you breathe in and then you hold it and then you go like this. And you like slowly let the air out and you just move your arms as fast as possible. Uh, something I like to do when I feel adrenaline too, if I have no couch to punch or something, I'll just punch the air and like move my feet fast as fuck. So I'll be like, let me, let me back up for this. I'll be like, I'll be like this. God, so fucking st I'll just be like, <laughs> and just like, just start shaking. Like I just start shaking and just punching nothing and lifting my feet up fast as fuck, like up and down. You do that for 20 seconds, bro. You end up like out of breath and then you calm down and the adrenaline's gone and then you can get into like big tension techniques or little tension techniques to fully get rid of the of the anxiety so lifting weights does not get rid of it Fuck, i'm out of breath dude holy shit, this bulk sucks you need to do some as if a lion was going to kill you okay we just talked about releasing tension right physical tension to activate the parasympathetic nervous system another problem with anxiety and dpdr is holy fuck, i'm out of breath is a buildup of emotion Right, this can be something else that makes you want to dissociate from your body. A bunch of emotion being stored up in your body. So you need to process your emotions. I've already discussed this quite a bit in my other videos about like sitting with your emotions, but like some important things about that is that like, just because you're experiencing emotions doesn't mean that you're processing them. You have to let the emotions peak fully and you have to embrace like pretty much every feeling that comes with them and every thought for like, I don't know, 30 minutes. It's usually how long it takes for you know your body to process someone you have to embrace everything it's good to find some place of solitude to go ahead and do this at i like to go in my car and just cry like a motherfucker you know you could put on some music too some some good halo music some good sad halo music you know if you're grieving or you know if you got anger you'll fucking punch something like it's really important for you to process these emotions because if you don't they end up being stored as tension within the body and tension equals sympathetic nervous system buildup, which equals anxiety or worse, DPDR. So it's really important for you to process your emotions, man. Plus, if you don't process your emotions, you are going to end up disconnecting from them. Yeah, if you don't want to feel sadness, your brain is going to turn off the sadness emotion. But you can't just turn off one of them. You turn off all of them. So then you can't feel joy. You can't feel happiness. You can't feel motivation. So it's really important to process the shit emotions that you don't want to. They're really not shit emotions. They're there for a reason. So moving on from that, when it comes to anxiety, there is triggers, right? Especially if you're someone who experiences OCD like me. My whole life, bro, I grew up with OCD. Uh, I was never officially diagnosed, but my dad's a psychologist. He said I had OCD. Yeah, the symptoms are just crazy. Bro, like literally growing up, dude, I would like, I would get from like, I would get to like a 10 in anger. I would be just so fucking enraged. Like if I just saw like my dad just, in a chair rocking if i saw the chair rocking or if my brother was chewing food or if my brother was sniffing or sneezing or sneezing there's a lot of triggers just weird triggers that i had and i remember a long time ago my dad told me when he was like studying to be a psychologist he's like hey if you don't do anything about these it's gonna get worse and they're gonna spread to other things and i was like yeah bullshit. <laughs> i didn't believe him i was like 12 at the time i was like fuck that and i didn't end up getting help and it spread everywhere and i'm undoing all these triggers now the past couple of years, everything has become a trigger. Like I'm, I'm constantly anxious, constantly like worried about perfectionism. Like I have to do things correctly. I have to do this. And the more I, I, I sat with it, I realized like, man, this is the same feeling I would get from the rocking chair, from my brother chewing. I was like, man, it's still obsessive thoughts. They just moved on to other things and it spread because I never got rid of the root problem. So I realized the conclusion I came to recently, I was like, man, if I want to go pro in CSGO, right? If I want to really pursue my passion, these dreams, I have to conquer essentially my my lifelong demon of OCD and anxiety. I have to conquer this shit, bro. I have like full hope that I can do this. I've never had hope that I can actually, I, I always grew up just accepting the fact I thought I was retarded. Like I thought I had something just mentally wrong with me. I literally, just, I legit thought I was retarded, bro. That I was just disabled. Like I was just this non-functioning human because like a, a chair would piss me off I, I, and I accepted it. And now I realize like, wow, I actually can do something about this. And I can do something about all these anxiety triggers, even like talking to people, socializing, you know, streaming, go, trying to go pro, all this stuff that were stressful and anxiety inducing to me. I can do something about it. I, they don't have to be that way. It's important to recognize what your triggers are. The more in tune you become with your body, the more you'll see them and you'll, the more you'll notice them like, oh, wow, that's 
actually stressing me out. Me talking to people, it gets my heart racing. That's the same feeling I get if I were to see a lion, you know, like you'll start recognizing the shit. Uh, a good helpful thing to do is to write out all your triggers and rate them out of one through 10, how much they like piss you off or get you anxious. And then over time you can come back and check in and be like, wow, I used to be at an eight when I had experience, I don't know, my dad in the rocking chair, now I'm at a four, right? You could see progress when you do that. What's the crazy thing about these triggers, bro, is that, like I said, you can get rid of them. So if every time you expose yourself to a trigger, let's say it's talking to girls, that was a big one for me. Every time you expose yourself to a trigger and you relax through it, right? You physically relax through it. You don't just say, hey, it's okay. That's not enough. You have to physically relax through it. Exposure plus relaxation will teach your brain that this is no longer something that is a threat and you just won't feel scared anymore. The, the thing that's really important about this with the exposure plus relaxation, you need both. You can't just relax without exposing yourself to triggers because you're still not experiencing them. You're still fleeing from this stuff and you can't just expose yourself to these triggers without relaxation afterwards because then you're not teaching yourself it's not inherently scary don't do what i'm about to say because i guess i'm like someone who has like a lot of willpower i, I had like horrible social anxiety i thought that i would be able to beat it if i just talked to a bunch of people if i especially if i talked to a bunch of girls like hot girls because that's really fucking scary and so i would just constantly just like you know go out of my way to talk to people in general and then also girls and like i would i don't ask for their number and stuff like the thing was is that I would never relax through it. I would always just like hype myself up. I'm like, all right, fucking just go do it. And I would just like, just go for it. And uh, it made the problem worse. It like, it, it, I guess it like leveled up my willpower because I was able to like will myself to do something that was like really scary. But I never just taught myself like, oh wow, it's actually not scary. And like actually relax through an interaction to actually just teach myself like, oh wow, there's nothing to be scared of. If you're able to do that, right? If you, you relax yourself, you do those techniques while you're exposed to the trigger then you just don't need to hype yourself up the next time because there's nothing to hype yourself. They're like you're not gonna be scared to begin with because you already just taught yourself that there's nothing to fear. Also, the other thing too, common misconception in psychology, you don't need to find out the origins of your triggers or you don't have to be aware of what it is exactly. All you have to do is just calm down every time you feel anxiety because if your triggers induce anxiety, as long as you're calming down once, whenever you experience anxiety, then you're calming down whenever you're experiencing a trigger. You don't need to physically be conscious of what your trigger is. Just every time you experience anxiety, bro, calm down and you'll eventually teach yourself to not be scared. It does help though to be aware. Rewiring your brain, neuroplasticity, this shit, this shit is what gave me hope, bro. Your brain is able to adapt. Pavlov's motherfucking dogs. You can teach yourself to no longer be scared. Just like how I taught myself to be scared of all these things. I taught myself that a rocking chair was a threat. You can unlearn that too. All this shit is beatable, bro. Anybody who tells you that you can just manage anxiety and DPDR is wrong. They are mistaken. They are correct in the sense that you will always have the ability to experience anxiety and DPR because those things are meant, they're helpful, right? If you were to actually encounter a lion, you want to feel anxiety. You want to get that adrenaline pump so you can run away from it. But you don't want to experience that if you're just going to the gym or if you're just trying to play CS and clutch up that 1v4. That's what I'm trying to get rid of is the gratuitous anxiety, the anxiety that doesn't need to belong there. So anybody who tells you that you need to manage symptoms is wrong. Yeah, everything that triggers anxiety or even DPR is a learned response. Some of it is inherent. I think there's like some studies that show that people are like naturally scared of spiders and snakes, but you can also get rid of that fear too is if you exposure plus relaxation and you relax by doing all those techniques I showed you with little tension, big tension and adrenaline. Exposure plus <laughs> relaxation right here. And this is an important thing. Stressors only become beneficial if you're able to recover from them. So anyone that tells you like, bro, like you need to experience stress in order to like, you know, grow as a person, they're right. But you don't want to experience too much stress where uh, you enter di distress. It's, it's not helpful. If we go back all the way over to here, when you're in a state of calmness, it's like a little bit of like sympathetic nervous system load, you'll, you'll find focus and optimal performance like around here where it's not too much stress and it's not too much calm. But once you go past that, you enter a state of distress you end up in like a catabolic state where like you're full of like stress and cortisol and like adrenaline and it like starts breaking your body down. You can't think straight. Also, your cognitive functions shut down. You're not able to like uh, think logically either. Um, it's just a horrible state to be in. So stress is good. Too much stress is bad. Also, too much calmness is also bad too. Like you need stress in your life, but not too much. Another thing too, when it comes to recovering from anxiety is that there's a lot of layers to this onion. The layers can get kind of weird. Uh, there's things known as somatic triggers, which is like triggers within the body. So one for me was like the feeling of fear itself caused fear. I had to like become okay with feeling scared in order to not feel scared, if that makes sense. Cause like I, every time I'd feel like a little bit of fear, I'd be like, oh fuck, now I'm feeling scared. And it'd make me even more scared and more scared. 
and it's okay. Your symptoms of your anxiety, your symptoms of DPDR, it is the correct response for the body, just the wrong time. Like if you're to actually see a line, like you wanna be scared. If you're actually about to get eaten from a line, you don't wanna feel shit. So that's why you depersonalize. But it's just, there is no line. So these symptoms that you're experiencing, all that fear, stress, and even the shakiness or the lack of emotion, bro, that is okay. It is safe. You're completely safe from them. They, the worst they can do is make you uncomfortable. That's something you can constantly tell yourself. The worst you can do is make me uncomfortable. And they're, they're okay. They're inherently okay. Don't be scared of them. Some other weird somatic triggers you can get is like even feeling your heartbeat. I, this was a big one for me because like, I mean, if you think about it, every time you experience anxiety, your heart starts racing. And so then I end up associating my heart beating with fear. So every time I'd feel my heartbeat, it would make me scared. And then I'd get scared. So my heart would beat faster and then it would beat faster. So I get more scared. And it was just this cycle. Becoming okay with just physical sensations is also a part of recovery of anxiety. Another big one for me too was like feeling uh, my face because I, I was like pretty insecure about like my weight when I was uh, bulked up last year. I was like 217. Now I'm like 175. Pretty insecure about how I look. So like feeling like my cheeks like always just remind me of being fat. And so I'd like just never want to feel myself physically. But that's like what you want, bro. You want to get back into the body. You want to feel the body. Your body should be your safe place. It should be your home. The end goal of anxiety and DPDR recovery is somatic integration. It's becoming one with your body again, feeling all your muscles, feeling all your body without tension and being okay within your physical body and not dissociating outside of it, right? Everyone is aware of mindfulness, awareness of thoughts but you want to have a good sense of bodyfulness, which is awareness of body and physical sensations, right? This is how you reach peace, bro. It's how you reach, reach relaxation. You can grind interioception XP by doing PMR. Like you can let, you can grind this shit, bro. This, this is the crazy thing, dude. You can grind anxiety recovery. Like I love grinding CS. I love grinding aim training. You can do that shit with anxiety too and just not experience it. Like it's fixable. Mindset, it should be a really high priority thing to recover that should be almost your number one priority is like constantly being in a calm state because why not like you don't want to be in a, a distressful state you're gonna have a hard time building muscle and shit or even just sleeping and socializing you want to avoid again what i learned from jordan hargrave a recovery mindset where it's like you're obsessed with it the goal of recovery itself can become an obsession ideally you want to get back to your daily life your daily routine and then relax throughout it uh, just add this to your day-to-day -day life like just like brushing your teeth Add these protocols, add the protocols of relaxing through little tension, you know, the pelvic floor release te uh, technique, add the protocols of reacting to big tension, you know, fast PMR or the physiological sigh, and then add the protocol of addressing adrenaline, fucking sprinting or the drum roll technique, whenever you're experiencing it, just, it's like brushing your teeth, bro. It's mental maintenance. It's just like how you have physical maintenance of washing your face every night, brushing your teeth. You have your mental maintenance, your mental routines. That's what you do when you ever experience those things. Another thing that helps too is having a consistent day-to-day -day routine. This communicates safe to the body. Again, shout out Jordan Hargrave. The goal should be to live life, get back to doing your job, pursuing your dreams, you know, having fun, engaging with people. And then you just do all the shit on top of that while you do that other stuff. Don't become obsessed solely with just recovery. It's like recovery plus living life again, dude. Just know that all this shit is conquerable, man. I th legit, three months ago, bro, I legit thought I broke my brain with my existential obsessions. You know, I was like obsessed with all these existential thoughts. Nothing felt real. Like reality wasn't real. I wasn't real. Like I couldn't feel emotions. I was completely nihilistic. I had no empathy. Like it was a, the most darkest fucking time of my life. And I performed like dog shit. I just want to like mention all this stuff because it's fixable, dude. Like I'm not even fully recovered, bro. And I feel like, I think, bro, let's say if I was at 0% recovery, like a couple months ago, I'm probably like 40% recovered. I don't even think I'm fully there yet. And I feel fucking amazing. Cause I've never felt this way in my whole life. My whole life I always had stressors and I'm like, I'm undoing all that stuff. So there is hope, bro. There is a hope. Like hope is a, uh, what I learned from Jordan Hargrave too. Hope is a critical ingredient to recovery from anxiety and DPDR is very critical. Even just having hope alone will help you see a reduction in symptoms. And you can gain this hope by even just looking at me and seeing me recover. And I gained my hope from seeing Jordan Hargrave and other people and his testimonials that are on his channel of other people recovering. I don't know. It's such a huge motivator and it makes you actually think that you can conquer stuff because you can, bro. You, It's a fact that you can. It is a psychological, scientific, biological fact that you can recover from this shit. All this gratuitous anxiety. You don't have to be scared when you're clutching. That's what I look forward to because it's like, bro, if theoretically, I can apply this to anything. Let's say I do go pro and I'm on stage at a major. If I'm on a stage at a major enough, 
and I apply these techniques, I just won't even be scared. It just won't even be in, in scary anymore because I've desensitized it as being scary. I won't be able to be myself on stage in front of thousands of people. Like, that would be fucking crazy. Or some girl I think who's out of my league, I can go approach her and talk to her and just be myself because it's not scary. Like, that shit used to be scary and it don't gotta be scary, bro. Like, nothing has to be scary unless it's like an actual lion, you know? Like, that's the whole trick is telling yourself there is no lion there. I just clear my head and just wake up more empty mm. every day and let and let God do the the driving.